Americans are now waking up to an entirely different political landscape. The Republican candidate, Donald Trump, has declared victory in the presidential election. But vote counting is still underway, and his Democratic rival, Kamala Harris, has not yet conceded. The crucial swing state of Pennsylvania was called for Trump earlier, leaving Harris with nearly no plausible path to the 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. Trump has already won the battleground states of North Carolina and Georgia, and he leads in most other swing states. Panel of guests now. I'm joined by Scott Lucas, who's a professor of U.S. and international politics at the University College Dublin, and Natasha Lindstedt, who's a professor of U.S. government at the University of Essex. Thanks for your time. Um, let me just, uh, Scott Lucas, I'll start with you. Just, uh, just give me your sense of how things transpired and how you assess the situation right now. I think the starting point is to say, and we need to be conscious of this in the media, uh, conscious of this wherever we are in the world, this is not normal. Uh, there is an anger and a resentment in the United States, which has been there for quite some time. Uh, it's been there with the trauma since 9-11. It's been there with the great financial crash, the great recession of 2008, 2009. It was there in 2016 when Donald Trump exploited it, and he exploited it again. He was able to exploit it again because the American political system itself is, is damaged. It, it didn't break when he tried to overthrow it in 2021, but it bent. So the actual facts about the economy, I could talk to you about inflation coming down significantly since 2022 when we had the post-COVID shocks. I could talk to you about GDP growth of 3.5%. I could talk to you about the, the lowest unemployment rate since the 1960s. I could talk to you about the infrastructure bill. I could talk to you about the, the Build Back Better bill. But it, I, the media wasn't talking about it. The Harris campaign, I disagree a little bit with your correspondent. The Harris campaign was not vague. It did put out policies. It did refer to what it did. But Donald Trump's kind of chaotic, his campaign of spectacle, uh, it sucked all the oxygen out of the room. And at the end of the day, it exploited that anger and that resentment which means we have to acknowledge that he will be going back into the White House. And we have to acknowledge that rather than curing all of the ills of the U.S. and the world, we're likely to go into a, a much more dangerous era, uh, a much more dangerous era for Americans and for the world, uh, because this will not be a coherent U.S. policy for America, for stability. Okay. It will be a policy pursued for Donald Trump. Okay, on that point uh, that you make about uh, the world, we'll come back to that in a moment, but let me bring in Natasha. Natasha, I mean, do you agree with Scott uh, Lucas? And is this perhaps, um, according to him, a failure of the political system in the U.S.? And what does the voting and the way that it's gone tell you about the psyche of the American voter and what's important to them? Uh, Natasha, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. I would agree that there are definitely issues of representation. Uh, there are um, problems with the, the two-party system. Um, but I think the big story was that Americans believed that he was better at running the economy, whether it's true or not. I mean, we don't really have evidence of that because he was able to inherit a strong economy from Obama. But that's what they thought was the issue. They were upset about gas prices being too high. They were upset about groceries being too high, even though inflation was going down and, and actually was down to the, the levels that it was during the Trump administration. But I think the other issue is that there are very different sets of information that people are getting. I mean, you have many Americans watching Fox News and other conservative, listening to other conservative radio outlets that are portraying a completely different world than the other uh, uh, news outlets are, are offering Americans. And so if we are not agreeing on the facts, if we have two different sets of information about what is happening, I mean, you had Fox News not even showing some of these rallies where Trump was clearly showing signs of mental decline. And, and was attacking his opponents and being repetitive and engaging in all kinds of grotesque, um, using grotesque words and, 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 and swearing and so forth. Many Americans just weren't seeing this. What they were focusing on was that their fears about the American demographics changing 
uh, rise in immigration and that he was going to fix it and that he would solve their economic woes. And it came down to this, and this became much more important factor than the threats posed um, by Trump to, to democracy, to reproductive rights, and just to common decency. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, Natasha, I'll just stick with you for one more. I mean, what do you think the Harris campaign did wrong, if we can say that? So the Harris campaign tried to move to the middle. Uh, maybe that was a risk by trying to, to cater to Republicans. I, I would agree with Scott that I do think she had a clear platform. I, I don't know how it could have been clearer. I mean, when she was claiming that she was going to give child tax uh, credits, uh, that she was going to offer um, support for first-time home buyers, that she was going to reduce the cost of pharmaceutical drugs, while Trump's big child care plan was child care is child care, his health care plan was he, he had a concept of a plan. I mean, th there was a huge difference in terms of the clarity of what their, their specific plans were. Um, I think maybe the problem was in the end that she she didn't do enough to get out the Democratic base. And I think another problem was something that she really couldn't control. She entered the race so early, uh, or at least she only had you know a couple of months. Um, that so, so late, I should say, in, in the campaign, that she didn't have enough chance to, to really connect with the American voter. Uh, but I think another factor that we really have to pay attention to is I really am concerned of sexism in America, racism in America, that these are still two issues that have not been unresolved. And to what extent people just didn't want to vote for women or they didn't want to vote for someone who they perceived to be too far to the left. I think there were certain things that her candidacy was just unable to overcome. Uh, Scott, you were mentioning just a moment ago uh, about the impact this could have on, on the world, in fact. Uh, when it comes to foreign policy, I mean, a lot of people would say that Trump has a record of unpredictability. So this is going to be a challenge, is it not, for foreign policy and particularly for fellow members uh, of the NATO alliance? Let's just be very clear on where we are and very specific. And that is, is that Donald Trump prefers foreign leaders who flatter Donald Trump. But Vladimir Putin uh, and Russia, that's a case in point. And so the effect of that is going to be that Trump is going to abandon Ukraine. Uh, he is going to effectively prop up the Kremlin's attempt to seize more than 25 percent of Ukrainian territory. And I think we'll probably have a parallel uh, to West Germany and East Germany in the Cold War. On Israel, Donald Trump has been very clear that whatever you think of the Biden-Harris policy, which I disagree with over Israel-Gaza, he's going to give unconditional support for Netanyahu. He's not going to attempt to pull Netanyahu back in any way. And that, of course, means that that open-ended war in Gaza and possibly Lebanon will expand. In other areas, Donald Trump will work on a whim. Will tariffs, will it be a global tariff of 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent? Will it be 60 percent on China? Will he impose a 20,000 percent tariff on automobiles, which mm -hmm. he said only a couple of weeks ago? The point here is, is that international relations depend on two things. They depend on having adults in the room and they depend on the rules of the game. We're not sure we're going to have adults in the room in terms of not only Trump, and his, but his inner circle. And we certainly aren't going to have the rules of the game under which we've operated for decades. OK, we'll leave it there. Scott Lucas, Natasha Lindsay, we thank you so much for joining us uh, on Al Jazeera. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.